Today on Your Questions Answered, I have a question from Mike Cobb Session and also just a general question that I've got quite a few times related to the Veritas honing jig. Can you hold narrow plane blades and also can you hold blades that are thicker at the front than at the back like you get with a, a lot of your old wooden planes like this and actually a bunch of your chisels as well. So let's jump in here and we'll get started. So I thought the best way to demonstrate this is to actually go ahead and uh, actually show you. So what I've got here, we can see that's got a, a clear taper on it. It is narrower here than here and it's out of my wooden jack plane here. So what I thought I'd do is I'll put it straight in using the parallel jaws and uh, then I've got a narrow chisel here which can also mimic a taper because as you can see it's tapered and uh, also it being narrow so we'll talk about that. So we always bring the blade in from the back as you can see and I loosely lock one side down, loosely lock the other side down. Yeah, you make sure it's all square which it is so we can remove that off and then you want to really lock these two screws down. Now I don't know if you can see in here but this lower jaw it kind of flex and contorts a little bit when you clamp and so uh, I don't know if that's possible to be seen in there but it's actually making complete connection even though this is tapered and it's only a very slight taper when you actually get to where you're clamping because it's such a narrow piece and so uh, it's not a heavy taper but the jaw sort of contorts, it flexes, and it still locks on there, and I'm, you know, I can't move that. So I can definitely say that tapered plain blades, or any tapered blade, the jaw holds it. And if we also come in, you know, I, I, it, I, I can't even move it side to side. So let's jump down here and we'll talk about narrow blades that are tapered. My chisel is the best demonstration of that, so that's what I'm going to show you it on. Always try when you use these to get your blade in the center. It's always going to work best, it's going to clamp best if you uh, get it in the center. It's just how they're designed and to get even clamping pressure that's what you need. So let's, it's a little bit of a fiddly process but once again I just lightly do one side up Make sure it's all pushed in and square. Lightly do the other side up. Then turn both of them fairly tight. Move the square out of the way and then do them up as tight as you can get them. So once again when you do this, I don't know if you can see that there, but the jaw actually flexes so you can pull it down tighter on each side. And the problem you get is with narrow blades is that even though that's not tight you can see that it swings side to side. Now if you're careful and you're not putting sideways pressure you can actually still come in here and sharpen like this and I did that and, and I do actually do that sometimes if I can't be bothered grabbing what we've got on here which is what Veritas did to stop that sideways racking. So you can come in tapered blade, move back and forth. It's not going to slide back and forth, but it could move side to side. So you have to be careful not to knock the blade or your chisel when you're sharpening like this, which in my mind with a chisel is a little difficult. If you've got other narrower blades that don't have a big long handle, it's not such a big issue. As long as you do it up and put it in there correct first. So let's just have a quick look at the, the narrow blade jaw. So this style is like your, your cheaper Eclipse style or more like that because it clamps on the side of your chisel so or, or your narrow blade and so if it's tapered we have no problem that can clamp it. So once again you could still put your fence on there with this it's less like uh, less necessary because we'll put the chisel in here like this and as you do this up it's going to grab it. And so you could then move your fence over, line it up so you know it's going to be in the right spot. And then all you need to do is twist that. 
and then you can see there's no sideways movement. I can't move that forward and backwards. Now, sometimes this can slide back and forwards. In this case, it's not because without the double screw and you've only got this big screw, it can be harder to lock that down nice and tight. And uh, with the tapered sides, sometimes uh, it'll only clamp on the top edge and you get the same thing with the Eclipse uh, chisels sometimes, is that if they've got tapers on the side, uh, side clamping don't work so well and uh, your chisels uh, can slide a little bit but in this case this one actually works pretty well as long as you don't have tapered sides and they're square but if the what I mean by taper is like if uh, the bevel edged chisels where the bevel comes out really wide and it's very narrow sometimes that can make it more difficult if you've got your firmer chisels where they're completely square on the side this is going to hold it well um, but if you've got firmer chisels, uh, I would usually just use the parallel jaws because I find that that holds them fine. But with these smaller ones, they do have this clamping jaw. And so we can go ahead, use this, no problems, no side to side movement anymore, no forward and backward, although. It doesn't put quite as much pressure to clamp it as um, you would get with the parallel jaws. And you just got to be careful you don't get too close because you can see I've done it here. And you can hit the bottom of these jaws on your stone if you haven't got it protruded much based on the angle that you want on your chisel. So that's just something to uh, be aware of. Just to recap, when it comes to this question, parallel jaws versus the narrow jaws and uh, tapered blades. Both of them can hold tapered blades fine, whether they're plain blades or narrow blades. But when it comes to a narrow blade, if you're careful, you can use the parallel jaw or you can go ahead and get the, the narrow clamping jaws. Both have their pros, both have their cons. And if you do get the deluxe kit, it does come with both those jaws. So you have some more flexibility there. So this was from the review that I did on the deluxe video, which I did uh, at least two years ago now. I'm not sure exactly when it was. And uh, just another reminder, I was not sponsored by Veritas. I liked the jig and I did a review on it because I thought that it was really the best on the market and the most beginner friendly for people just starting in hand tool woodworking. But I still believe you should try and learn to freehand sharpen and so if you have narrow blades like that that cause a problem with the parallel, maybe instead of buying the narrow jaws, you might want to learn to freehand sharpen. And so I'll leave a few links down below for some of that. So if you like this video, please do like and subscribe down below. While you're down there, do sound off in the comments. I'm interested to hear what your guys' experience is with the Veritas Honing Jig, narrow versus parallel, and maybe any uh, issues that you've had arise that I haven't. It'd be great to hear that. And also leave any other questions that you might like to come up in a video such as this down below as well. And if you'd like to see another great Your Questions Answered video like the one you've seen here today, do check out the playlist up here that has all the Your Questions Answered videos. Bye for now.